How's it going everybody? My name is Lucky Buns, and in today's video we're going to be going over the upcoming bug out event along with Mega Heracross Raid Day. With that being said, let's jump straight into it. So first up, let's go over the bug out event. This event is going to take place from April 12th to April 17th at 10am to 8pm local time. The bonuses are going to be as follows. We're going to get 2 times catch experience on nice, great, and excellent throws. Now on top of that, for getting nice, great, and excellent throws, you're also going to be getting increased candy as well as increased extra large candy if you're level 31 or higher. And we're also going to be getting boosted shiny odds on Combi and Burmy. Now I'm not entirely sure how much of a boost we're going to be getting on these Pokemon, but if I had to take a guess, it's probably going to be 1 out of 64 opposed to their full odds rate, which is going to be 1 out of 500. So yeah, that's a big increase. Now finally, our last bonus is going to be a 15-minute gym lure if you guys beat a raid boss with at least two or more trainers. Essentially, Pokemon are just going to spawn around that gym for the next 15 minutes. Niantic has implemented stuff like this in the past during, like, elite raid days, but it hasn't always gone super well, so I would kind of go in with low expectations. Next up, let's go over the wild encounter. So first of all, I want to talk about Caterpie, Weedle, and Wurmple. So all three of those Pokemon are going to be 12 candy evolution Pokemon, which are the cheapest Pokemon on to actually evolve in the game. Now considering the candy bonuses from getting nice, great, and excellent throws, it's actually going to be a great time to use your Pineapp Berries on these Pokemon specifically to get a bunch of candy for their evolutions. Now the only other Pokemon that I really wanted to note in terms of wild encounters is going to be Combi, which is going to be available in the wild. It's actually one of the few Pokemon that gets boosted Stardust when you catch it, so if you ever see a Combi, make sure you always catch it. Now unfortunately, the downside to Combi is that it does have a really low catch rate, so you're most likely going to have to use at least regular Raspberries or even Golden Raspberries to catch it, otherwise there's a good chance it will run away. Alright, so next up let's go over the field research encounters, and we definitely have a lot of good ones in the field research during this event. So the first Pokemon that I want to go over is going to be Paris, which also awards bonus Stardust when catching it, very similar to Combi. Now if you guys actually decide to run away from your field research encounters, they will go into a stack which can go up to 100 encounters, and essentially you can just go and catch these whenever you want. So basically the strategy here is that we do have an upcoming spotlight hour on the 16th, I'm going to talk about this more later on in this video, but that bonus is going to be 2 times catch Stardust. So basically, if you farm a bunch of Paris during this event and you save them in your field research stack, you can then redeem those encounters while you have the 2 times catch Stardust bonus with a start piece and get even more Stardust than you would just during this event. Now we talked about Burmy earlier, this Pokemon is going to be shiny boosted and the only way to actually get them is going to be from field research quests during this event, so if you're trying to complete that shiny family, make sure you take advantage of those. Now it also seems like we're going to be getting Mega Beedrill, Mega Pinsir, and Mega Scizor energy from research tasks as well, so I don't know what the actual task tasks are going to be, they haven't actually posted them yet, but it does seem like no matter what you end up doing, you're going to have some pretty good encounters in there along with some good energy. Now finally, we're also going to be getting Pokestop showcases, so these are going to be event themed. I'm pretty sure it's just going to be any sort of bug type Pokemon that you have. Now, if you guys are able to place at least first or second, and possibly even in multiple showcases, you guys can get premium items like star pieces, lucky eggs, and even special lure modules, so definitely recommend doing them. With that being said, that's pretty much the event in a nutshell. If you guys do want to focus on experience, I definitely make sure to drop lucky eggs as you're grinding for those excellent throws. Otherwise, you know, I probably wouldn't even use a lucky egg during this event. Just aim for the excellent throws, work on, you know, getting those more consistent, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Now, I did talk about this earlier that I was going to go over spotlight hour, so this is going to take place on the 16th of of April, and it's going to be a collective spotlight hour with the special bonus being two times catch Stardust. The featured Pokemon are going to be Caterpie, Weedle, and Wurmple, so they go perfectly with the bug out event. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but the bug out event bonuses are going to stack with the two times catch Stardust, so we're also going to get two times catch experience on nice, great, and excellent throws, along with increased candy and increased extra large candy if you also get those nice, great, and excellent throws as well. So, I kind of feel like this spotlight hour has a little bit of everything, right? If you want a candy farm, then just go with the pineapple berries. If you want an XP farm, then go with the lucky eggs. However, when it comes down to the Stardust bonus, I don't think it's necessarily worth using Star Pieces unless you plan on grinding hard. For example, if you actually stockpiled some of those Paras that I told you about, then yeah, that would be a great way to take advantage of the bonus with a Star Piece active. That being said though, if you guys also don't have that many Star Pieces, there are more beneficial times to use them, like Calm Day with a 3 times catch Stardust bonus, or even at the end of a GBL season. So, you can definitely have Lucky Eggs and Star Pieces both active at the same time, so if you guys have a lot of resources available to you, then definitely take advantage of these bonuses, but otherwise, I wouldn't really focus on the Pineapp Berries if you're going to be grinding experience as well as Stardust hard, because it's just going to waste a lot of your time. So, that's my recommendation to you, and if you are going to be going for those excellent throws, make sure to use Nana Berries, otherwise the Pokemon attacking you is going to really mess you up. So we definitely have a lot of things to keep in mind with the Bug Out event, but now let's talk about Mega Heracross Raid Day, which is going to take place on April 13th from 2 to 5 p.m. local time. 
Now Mega Heracross is also going to stay in raids until April 25th, but the Shiny Raid is only going to be boosted during the raid day. So let's go over the bonuses right now. So like usual during raid days, we're going to get five additional free raid passes, but you have to claim them during the time window, so between 2 to 5 p.m. Now keep in mind that we already get two free raid passes per day thanks to the current season bonuses, so we're going to get a total of seven free raid passes, but you could also save one of your free raid passes in your inventory from the day before. This way you can actually do a total of eight free Mega Heracross raids. That's pretty awesome, right? The remote raid limit is also going to be increased to 20 raids during this day as well, but unfortunately the price is not going to be decreased once again, which I think is kind of stupid, but whatever it is what it is. And we're also going to be getting boosted shiny odds of 1 out of 10 on these Mega Heracross raids, which is pretty solid. Now on top of that, there's also going to be an event ticket available for $5 if you guys want to purchase it. You're going to get eight additional free raid passes. These are going to be the orange ones though, so you have to use them before 10 p.m. You actually get an increased duration on the raid day if you get the event ticket as well. So normally the event ends at 5 p.m., right? Well, if you get the event ticket, the event actually ends at 10 p.m. now, which is good for some players if they want to do more raids. Now you guys can also give these tickets to your friends so if you want someone to raid with you a little bit longer. It's definitely a good incentive. The value itself is of course worth it if you use at least five of those eight raid passes, but of course I recommend using all eight. Now the other bonuses are kind of negligible just in my opinion because the extra large candy chance, like it's not disclosed and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, so I wouldn't rely on that one too much, and the experience bonus as well as Stardust bonus is more of like a cherry on top. Now if you guys are considering buying this ticket though, I would recommend checking out the web store directly as they usually do offer discounts. I believe for this event specifically, you get an extra raid pass if you go through the web store. Now let's talk about Mega Heracross details. So first of all, the Mega Energy 2 Mega Evolve it for the first time is going to be 200, after that it gets reduced by 80%. You guys should easily get enough energy just from using your free passes alone, so I wouldn't worry about this one too much. But now let's talk about Heracross and PvP, right? So where's the relevance here? Is it actually good? Is it not good? So Heracross used to be a lot better in PvP, but it's fallen off quite a bit. Now it's also important to consider that Heracross from raids will also have a floor of 10-10-10, which means that you won't be able to get any ideal PvP IVs during this event. So the question now becomes, well, does Heracross actually have play in the Master League? Because that's going to be the only relevant spread I can actually get. So it's currently ranked at 131 right now in the Open Master League, and I'm sure it ranks at least a little bit better in the Master League Premier Cup because you can't use Legendary Pokemon in that cup. And the ideal moveset you want to have is going to be Counter plus Rock Blast and Close Combat. So before you guys actually decide to power one of these things up, let's talk about this Pokemon in the Raid slash Gym meta as well. So... Heracross, regular Heracross I should say, isn't that good compared to most of your other meta options in the bug and fighting type categories, but Mega Heracross is a completely different story. So Mega Heracross is effectively going to become the best bug type as well as the best fighting type attacker in the game. If you want to run it as a bug type Pokemon, Struggle Bug plus Mega Horn is going to be the ideal moveset, and then if you want to run it as a fighting type Pokemon, Counter plus Close Combat is going to be the ideal moveset. So if you end up getting the Hundo or like a really good IV spread that you want to max out to level 50, the upside is that you could actually run it as both a fighting type attacker as well well as a Master League relevant Pokemon, but it's more like a Master League Premier Cup relevant Pokemon, not so much open Master League. But again, dual functionality is always great, so that's definitely a plus for Mega Heracross. But I do want to remind you guys that we haven't gotten Mega Lucario yet in the game, which when that eventually comes out, that is going to be the best fighting type attacker in the game by a decent amount compared to Mega Heracross. So that being said, Mega Heracross as a bug type attacker, that is most likely going to hold its spot for the foreseeable future. I'm pretty sure Mega Heracross is going to be like the best bug type attacker in the game until we get Shadow Volcarona or like Shadow Feramosa. Now because this is a raid day, it's actually really easy to pinpoint what the 100% IVs are going to be, so if you guys are doing the raids non-weather boosted, the Hundo is going to be 1772, and if the raids are weather boosted, the Hundo is going to be 2215 CP. Now one tip I recommend so you don't forget what these Hundo CPs are is to go to your battle party and write them down. So put 1772 slash 2215. Now you're always going to remember the Hundos as you're going through those raids during Mega Heracross raid day. Next up, let's go over counters for Mega Heracross. So basically you guys just want to be using flying type Pokemon. Some of your best flying type options are going to be Pokemon like Rayquaza with Air Slash plus Dragon Ascent, Yveltal with Gust and Oblivion Wing, Moltres with Wing Attack and Sky Attack, Staraptor with Gust and Fly, and the list goes on from there. If you guys want to check out a full list of counters, then I highly recommend going to Poke Battler and checking out basically everything that you guys can use against this Pokemon. You can also factor in weather boosts and stuff like that. Um, but if you guys are going to be playing with others, which I would imagine you are during a raid day like this, make sure to party up as well so you get additional damage bonuses. With that being said, I do have some additional tips and tricks to go over, so let's cover those right now. The first one is going to be the Mega Evolution. So what Mega Evolution is going to be the best during this event? Well, if you haven't guessed it already, Bug-type Pokemon are pretty much the MVP here. So you can basically go with Beedrill, Pinsir, Scizor, even Kyogre. And I know what you're thinking, Kyogre isn't a Bug-type Pokemon. Yeah, it's not a Bug-type Pokemon, but it actually 
boost bug type Pokemon when you have the primal active. So whichever one of these Pokemon you guys do have at mega level three, I would prioritize that one over the others for increased candy and extra large candy bonuses. If you don't have a Pokemon at mega level three, then just use your highest level mega and then just go with that one. That'd be my recommendation there. Um, you're also going to be getting more candy during Mega Heracross Raid Day if you do have a bug type Pokemon active. Alternatively, you could also use a fighting type Mega to get the candy bonuses for Heracross, but again, I would recommend the bug type Mega just so you get the wild spawn bonuses as well. The next thing that I want to go over is that Heracross is normally a regional Pokemon. So if you guys want to farm a lot of candy on this Pokemon, then I would highly recommend using some of your Silver Pounded Berries to catch Heracross during this event. Combined with a Mega Level 3 candy bonus plus the event bonus with the uh, Exxon throws, you guys can definitely get a lot of candy on Heracross. And seriously, guys, if you don't have that much candy on it, it's going to be really difficult difficult after this event to get candy on Heracross. You're gonna have to use your rare candy because unless you live in that area where Heracross spawns, there's no other way to get it. Finally, my last tip is going to be to use Poke Genie for raid support or even Campfire. For those of you guys who don't have that many trainers in your local area, I would highly recommend hosting raids through Poke Genie. Again, like we're gonna have the remote raid pass limit increase during that day to 20, so a lot of people are going to be doing Heracross raids. I mean, it's like the best bug type. It's the best fighting type in the game. It's definitely going to be a Pokemon that people really want, not to mention the shiny is super pretty. So uh, yeah, definitely a Pokemon that I think a lot of people are going to be interested in. I would also recommend checking out Campfire to see if you guys can find raids and groups in your local area as well. That's definitely been very helpful for me recently. Other than that, there isn't really anything else I really need to go over. If you guys want to check out some more content, I'm going to recommend these two videos right here. But before you go, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you all real soon in the next one.